This telescope I have here is special, and now I'm going to tell you why. It's one of the latest releases from SV Boney, and its optical design is based on the ones used by some of the best brands ever in catalioptric telescopes. Brands like the prestigious Intes Micro. My name is Luis Miguel Asorin, and I welcome you once again to Natural Portraits. This week we're going to test the new 127mm Maxutop telescope launched by SV Boney, and I'm going to tell you why. This telescope is so special. Right here we have one of SV Boney's most powerful offerings, a Maxutop with a 127mm aperture and a 1500mm focal length f11.8. But this Maxutop is not the classic Maxutop Cassegrain. If we look at the typical Maxutop Cassegrain design, we'll find something like this. A compact tube made up of a primary mirror at the back and a secondary mirror, which is nothing more than an aluminized spot on the meniscus or corrector lens located at the front of the telescope. Focusing is done by moving the primary mirror and so is collimation. But the MAX 127 from Suvi Boni is different. And the most notable difference is that it doesn't have that aluminized patch in the center of the front corrector lens or meniscus, unlike its smaller siblings of 90 and 105 mm. In this case, we have a plastic cap that allows us to access the collimation cell of the secondary mirror. Yes, in this design we collimate the secondary mirror, not the primary. This is because this Mac 127 is not a Maxutov Cassegrain, but a Rumac Maxutov. And beyond that, what else sets a Maxutov Cassegrain apart from a Rumac Maxutov? Well, basically, it's the way each telescope corrects for spherical aberration. While Maxutov Cassegrains corrected solely through the meniscus or front lens, Rumac Maxutovs do so using a combination of a modified meniscus with a central hole and the secondary mirror, which in this case is not just an aluminized spot. And this means that Rumac Maxutovs have more advanced optical correction and offer higher image quality than that provided by Maxutov Cassegrain. And all of this in just 2.9 kilograms a very ambitious move by SV Boni. So what we have here is an optical design that until now we only saw in high-end Russian catadioptric telescopes. But the surprises don't end here, as this telescope comes standard with a series of accessories that are definitely worth considering. It features a dual speed focuser dual finder super perfect for installing guiding systems and devices like Azier, Stellaview or a mini PC. It has both 1.2 5-inch and 2-inch output ports. And for me, the most interesting thing of all is a specific 0.65x reducer lens that allows us to turn this telescope into an f7.8 with a 975mm focal length. This is something very rare in the world of Maxutov telescopes. There are very few reducer lenses for Maxutovs, and even fewer that are specifically made for a particular Maxutov model. And this makes this telescope a very versatile option if we're looking for equipment that allows us to do both planetary astrophotography and deep sky astrophotography with high focal length. So on paper, it's an incredibly interesting piece of equipment in terms of feature. But how will it perform in practice? In this session, we're going to put its performance in planetary astrophotography to the test. Alright, I've already got the moon centered in the frame here. For now, I'm observing visually. Right now, I'm at prime focus with a 20mm IP. And although there's some atmospheric turbulence, because the moon is still very, very low on the horizon, for the moment I can see a pretty sharp image. In fact, along the Terminator, the details are spectacular. We have the Theophilus and Katharina craters there, which are very, very clear. And I have to say that this dual speed focuser really helps to achieve precise focus. I'm going to put in a 10 mm eyepiece. Let's get a bit closer. All right, now I'm using the 10 mm eyepiece 
and the level of detail I can see is truly incredible. It feels like we're observing through a telescope with a larger aperture. The image is truly very sharp. And that's even though, as I said, the moon is still quite low on the horizon. So I'm gonna set up the computer and attach the camera. All right, so here we have the moon at prime focus with this 127 millimeter Rumac Maxuto. The camera I'm using is the SB Bonnie SC715C, a camera we recently reviewed on the channel, and it's known for having the smallest pixels on the market. Therefore, it's an ideal camera for planetary astrophotography because it allows us to achieve extremely high resolution in this type of image. As I said, right now we're working at prime focus and we can see that there's some atmospheric turbulence, Let's get closer here to focus. And well, notice that with this dual speed focuser, achieving precise focus, even with atmospheric turbulence, is actually very easy. Also, I don't notice any image shift in the telescope. We can really achieve a very, very precise focus. Right now, we're working with this camera at a focal length of 1,500 millimeters. Here we have a spectacular region of the Moon, which is the area of Theophilus, Cyrillus and Katharina. Let's try to achieve a fine focus in this area. I'm going to zoom in. More, 300%. Yeah, I would say this is the best focus I can achieve under these conditions. Well, I've captured a couple of images under these conditions at prime focus of the lunar surface. Well, we have to admit that tonight isn't really ideal for much. That has to be said, but I can't pass up the chance to put a Barlow lens on to see how this Rumac Maxut of 127mm performs. So I'm going to attach the 2x Barlow lens and let's see what we get. Alright, the Barlow lens is in place and here we have the moon again, let's focus. And there we have the image. And uh, well, we have to admit that tonight isn't really ideal for this level of magnification, but it doesn't look too bad at all. Honestly, the sharpness of this telescope is above what you'd get from another telescope of this same size. Take a look at the details of these craters we have here. Let's get a bit closer and well, keeping in mind that the current scene conditions are quite poor and challenging, we can still get an idea of the level of optical sharpness this Rumac Maksutov telescope offers. Notice the intricate detail it gives us in all these numerous craters and in these towering mountains located right on the lunar limb that is right on the very edge of the moon against the dark, black background of the sky. And despite the atmospheric turbulence we're experiencing, notice how the dual speed focuser gives us a great deal of precision to get as close as possible to the correct focus point. For example, with my 150mm Maksutov, this is almost impossible in fact. I constantly have to go from intrafocus to extrafocus, intrafocus to extrafocus, stopping at each point until I finally manage to get the correct focus. But with this dual speed focuser, it really is very, very easy. Well, I've been wandering around the moon for a little while now, and the scene conditions have improved noticeably. Right now, there's much less atmospheric turbulence, so much less. And honestly, now is when I'm really starting to enjoy myself a lot what this little 127mm Maksutov can offer us. At the moment, I have the 2x Barlow lens attached, and as you can see, I've also changed the capture software. Right now, I'm working with SharpCap, which seems to give me a much smoother image. And look at this. Look at that level of detail. It's just incredible. We're talking about a telescope with a 127mm aperture. Right now, we're working at a focal length of 3000mm. And while it's true that the camera we're using, the SC715C, is a camera with a lot of resolution, just look at the outstanding sharpness this telescope gives us. If I fine-tune the focus, the sharpness is truly astonishing. Considering the aperture of this telescope, which isn't even that large, as I think I've already mentioned, I dare say it gives me more sharpness than my 150mm, 1800mm focal length Maksutov Kassegre. It 
must be acknowledged that this Rumak Maksutov optical design telescope launched by the SB Bonnie brand has truly been a very strong move by this company brand that, as you can see, is already very well positioned in the world of astronomy and astrophotography, offering products that are truly on par with top-tier telescopes and equipment on the market. And this small telescope, from my point of view, is a statement like slamming a fist on the table saying, hey, we're here and look at what we're capable of doing. I have truly been amazed by what I've seen in this session with this little Maksutov, and this is only the beginning. Because as I mentioned in this video, this telescope comes with a 0.6 5x reducer, which would allow us to use this equipment for deep sky astrophotography with a focal length of over 900 mm and an f8 aperture. But we'll leave that for a future video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again next week with what we love most, photography and nature. Here on Natural Portraits. Goodbye.